Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's that time of the week. We're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. Okay folks, starting off this week with an exclusive. One of my favorite exclusives, I think, because after all, I am a Ness Muck fan. This is the Revo Ness with that kind of characteristic blade shape. Knife Center exclusive here with the new Micarta handles. Micarta. Micarta? Micarta. That sounded weird the way I said that, but we're going to roll with it. Micarta, Yucarta. We Micarta. all carta together on this really cool knife. <laughs> Add to cart. Add to cart. There you go. Natural Micarta handles, uh, slightly different shape uh, than the original G10 versions here. There's just a little bit more sculpting on the edges and reversible deep carry pocket clip here. Pocket clip itself is a little bit shorter. Uh, the old version had a fairly long clip by today's standards. Uh, so by making it shorter, it's a little less prone to snagging. Might have a, a little more durability built in because of that. Uh, price on these guys, 66 and a half dollars for that 3.6 inch blade. D2 steel, awesome full flat grind with this slicey profile. Very, very cool. Ball bearings in the pivot. This is a flipper as well. Really nice shape when folded shut, but when it's time to open, that flipper tab serves you quite well when you go to open it. Really like this guy. Uh, I've carried one of the G10 versions of this uh, for a while myself. Despite the kind of width, when you see it like so, it does carry very easily in the pocket and that blade shape, man, the geometry on it too, just works so well day to day. We've also restocked on another exclusive that's been out for a while, our standard pack of wood Delica exclusive from Spyderco. Uh, about 156 for these guys with that stabilized laminated material and a HAP 40 laminated blade as well. Kind of lamb, lamb on lamb here, the way these things are spec'd out. Uh, the core of that blade is HAP 40, high performance tool steel, the outer layers. Uh, or I, I believe they're 420, uh, or no, 410 stainless steel uh, to help protect the blade underneath from rusting because this is a non-stainless steel and also provides a bit more strength as well thanks to that triple laminated construction. Beyond that, it's a Delica. The only thing you don't get uh, that the standard Delicas have is a lanyard hole. Doesn't bother me too much, but keep that in mind. Sub three inch blade, full flat grind, super slicey, enough handle length there for most folks to have a full handle without it being too much. Four position pocket clip, ambidextrous lock back there in the middle with the David Boy dent on it. Works pretty much for everyone. And you've got a classy kind of friendlier feeling Delica, I think than any of the other versions out there right now. All right, next up, New versions of the James Brand Ellis. These are about 119 right now. Slip joint pocket knives. These are non-locking. Uh, you've got a 12C27 blade, 2.6 inches with partial serrations. And you can get this uh, with Micarta handles right here with the satin finish or G10. There's a green and a black G10. And on those, the tools are blackened as well. Now, speaking of tools, you do have more than one. I'll go ahead and close the blade here. Walk and Talk is a little bit on the softer side, not super crisp, but works quite well. What I'm really happy about though on this knife is the pair of scissors that it gives you. Feels very solid. You've got the uh, back spring there, or sorry, the spring on the scissors acting off of the leaf spring of the slip joint mechanism there. Feels super solid. And I like the, uh, the kind of fuller look as opposed to a nail nick to get it out. Really cool. Uh, as for the rest, You've got a deep carry wire pocket clip and you've got the pry bar tip slash screwdriver there on the end. No bottle opener on this. So can we call it a multi-tool? Yes, but officially no, I should say. Um, pretty cool knife no matter, even though it doesn't have It's just a more than that. one tool. It's a, it's a more than one tool. It's a multiple tool, one tool option. That's the main, no, we're, we're sorry. <laughs> I'm not here to make sense. Uh, supposedly I am. Well, seeing how that's going right now. Pretty cool, these guys. Though. I do like them. Uh, let's keep the slip joint game going here for a little bit. I, we have, I should say, a new case slimline trapper. 
with the blue Kiranite handles, uh, blue pearl Kiranite. Really nice looking knife, 66 bucks for this, US made as is typical. Blade itself, not quite three and a quarter inches in length. Case is true sharp stainless with that high polished finish. If you watched our knife AQ over the weekend, we talked about mirror polished finishes a little bit and how they make Thomas very, very happy. Yeah. Makes his job so much easier when he's filming close ups. Um, not really. <laughs> but I love the slimline trapper. I think it's a phenomenal, elegant shape. Obviously, the, the slimline in the name, you get that nice, svelte, snaky look. Folds up super slim. Not super small in the height, but it's gonna nestle into a pocket or a uh, gear pouch or anything very easily. Awesome letter opener for sure. Very gentlemanly overall. And the Kiranite, very cool material. It's like a poured acrylic and kind of like Micarta in a way. This is one of those materials if you're sweaty or it's a little wet, it doesn't start to feel slick. It might even feel a little bit tackier, which is pretty cool. This is part of the Sparks series and that's why you get the uh, little shiny bits there in the shield. If you'd rather have something a little more kind of rustic looking, we've also got a new corn cob jig bone sod buster junior, uh, corn cob antique bone, I should say. I really like the jigging pattern here. I really like the warm character of the die job on it as well. We're at 55 bucks for this blade here, just over two and a half with that same stainless steel full height hollow grind on both of these knives and that high polished finish. Being the Sodbuster, we don't have anything like a half stop on this knife because Sodbusters traditionally were just kind of working man's tools, not anything super fancy, but the jig bone here classes things up, I think quite nicely, really like that. If you kind of like these vibes, but you'd rather have some kind of lock, check out this next knife. Schrade is kind of making some moves this year to bring back some of the uh, excitement to some US made products that they haven't done much of uh, since being acquired a few times over the years. But check out this Bruin. We checked out a D2 version of this last week, but here we have a USA made version with 1095 carbon steel, very similar profile to that Sodbuster Jr. right there. Um, I'm not actually sure who's building these for Schrade right now. Um, but I don't think it's Buck. There's things about it that feel a little bit, or sorry, I don't think it's Case. There's things that make it feel a little bit different than that Sodbuster. The edge itself is a little more refined, in fact. Uh, price on this, $72 right now. For that, we've got chestnut bone handles with almost like a saw cut feel going on. It's not quite the same, I don't think. Um, it's more like lines have actually been scored in the sides. Pretty nice, though. The blade, like I said, 1095. If you like classic carbon steel on your, uh, your classic looking pocket knives, this is a great option. Full height hollow grind on this as well. A Little bit more of a rise to the spine here, almost slightly humpish in a way, kind of neat. And of course the back lock keeps things even more safe when you're actually using that blade. You don't have to worry about it folding closed on you in quite the same way. But I'm really excited to see kind of some of the new Schrade uh, USA made stuff, kind of leaning on their heritage a bit. And if they're all gonna be put together as well as this, I think we're in for some, some good stuff to come for sure. Keep it on the, uh, the slightly old school train, but we've got a couple folders here from Buck, some classic patterns upgraded to a uh, 2022 limited edition. They're only gonna be making these next two knives this year, this is the 2022 Legacy Collection Squire. Really classy looking gents version of their Squire lockback. Although, you know, the standard Squire is pretty gentsy too with the, uh, the standard wood scales, but those aren't limited. No. Now are they? Uh, 255 bucks for this, however. Bucks, yeah. So make sure uh, you're, this is what you want before you, you drop the money. If you're unsure about the pattern, check out the, uh, the less expensive one, perhaps. But with this one, you are gonna get upgraded blade steel. We've got S45, no, sorry, S35 VN on this guy. Two and three quarters of an inch, simple drop point shape. Angled bolster here on the back and a burlap micarta handle that I think looks really good. Big fan of micarta, big fan of burlap micarta, even more so. Lock back there on the end. 
Kind of the same story as this uh, this Schrade Bruin in a way. Just a different, kind of different take on the format in a way. Not quite a sodbuster blade shape, but similar utility in this particular knife. One thing you do get with the buck that you don't get with that Schrade, however, is a small pocket, or sorry, a small belt sheath right here. You have just classic leather, snap on the front. Although I dare say, we don't have it here anymore, uh, but MKM's magnetic pocket sheath, which is available as a standalone thing, could be another option for any of these slip joints right here if you want a kind of faux pocket clip situation. Slide it into that pocket sheath so it stays right in place and it isn't floating around on you. It's also gonna protect the, uh, the handles of these quite nicely. So it's not floating around in your pocket getting banged up either. All right, next. 2022 Legacy Collection from uh, Buck is the Saunter. A bit of a more original design as opposed to an old pattern brought updated. Uh, I don't think, can't remember seeing this at any point in the past, but some Buck uh, Buckheads out there might know a little bit better than I will. Uh, 160 bucks for this guy, S35VN, two and a half inches on the blade, full flat grind as opposed to the hollow grind on the Squire we just looked at, uh, but no lock here. This is back to slip joint construction. Walk and talk, feels pretty nice. No half stop, but the action's snappy enough, certainly. Nice broad fuller there to uh, act as the nail nick and marbled carbon fiber for the handles. Even a bit of a bail sticking out there at the back if you wanna add a, a fancy bead or lanyard, something like that. Classy looking piece right there. It's definitely a good, uh, another good gentleman's option and something a bit different from Buck as well. All right, next up, I'm gonna show a custom here and something that is gonna blend kind of some old school sensibilities with new. This has slightly a bit of an, uh, kind of an old school custom vibe right here. The Aaron Frederick custom liner locking folder knife. It doesn't have a, an actual name. Pretty good deal for what you're getting here. Only 375 bucks for a custom made knife right here. Very cool. Three and a half inch CPM 154 blade horizontal grain, single right side thumb stud on this guy. Moving back, we've got titanium dovetailed bolsters with black G10 behind it, and it looks like a green micarta backspacer. I don't even think we have the material for the backspacer listed on the, uh, the spec sheet, but that sure looks like micarta, and I, it might be black, but it could be uh, green that's darkened over the years. Uh, interestingly enough, a lot of black micartas use the green dye, just a lot of it, to get the, uh, the black color. Not all of them, uh, but some of them do. It's kind of interesting. But a cool look nonetheless. Single position pocket clip right there. Liner lock, washer construction here. Very cool. Like I said, a little bit of an old school vibe to this. It's not quite the, uh, the same style as a lot of modern makers right now, but man, check. I mean, look, just look how classy that guy is really, really dig the gentleman's nature, kind of the executive styling of this knife. All right, next up, a couple of uh, mid techs. We have some new Olamic to share. The first is a Wayfarer 247 with the, what's the blade, what's the shape? Done up. Sheep's Cliff, Sheep's Cliff blade. It even says so on the website. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why, <laughs> It says sheep's cliff. That's that's a straight up uh, sheep's foot right there. Maybe we'll say modified because there's a little bit of belly to it. But that, that's got sheep's foot written all over it. Uh, three and a half inches or just under that, I should say, M390. Uh, these guys are made in the USA as well. Really cool, darkened, stonewashed finish. Not blackened, but a little bit on the gray side. Titanium handles. Check out that cool sculpted backspacer on that guy too. Really nice, 545 bucks for this guy. Got the milled pocket clip right there. Uh, is that milled actually? I'm not sure. It is standing up by posts, but it looks like it's probably milled. Definitely looks like the same titanium material as the handle. And then you got the ball bearing at the pinch point there too. Internal over travel stop and lock plate for the blade. Such a cool shape from them. Definitely a very distinctive knife. You can instantly tell that this is an Olamic. This next knife is maybe a little bit less distinctive as an Olamic, but it's put together just as nicely, which is to say, 
world-class fit and finish on both of these knives. This is the Midtech Rainmaker 645 for this guy. And we've got a couple of different versions right now with some different uh, accent colors, but right now they're both uh, titanium handles with a gun coat finish, which is very durable. Uh, some folks may remember we had some uh, exclusive Sabenzas with that type of finish on it. You don't see it often on knives, but they're very, very durable. And this one has, um, what are we calling this color? Green on the accent. It's almost a blue green. That's why I wanted to check the, uh, the site there real quick, but you've got that floating backspacer with the same color. Four and an eighth an inch, four and an eighth of an inch on the blade itself, M390 again. Ton of real estate right there. I mean, just look at how much blade folds up so neatly into a handle like that. Definitely, you know, it's got some depth to it, but it's not like a super chunky thing that's gonna take up too much pocket space. Like I said, as long as you've got the depth for it, it should be pretty manageable. And that flip. Oh, so nice on both of these knives. Ball bearing flippers, of course, superb. Next, we have a MechForce, the M1, which I believe is their first uh, knife design. These guys are about 350 bucks. For that, you've got a titanium frame lock flipper with M390 steel, about three and a half inches or thereabouts, and a couple different inlay options. We've got a marbled carbon fiber as well as this grid patterned blue titanium right now. Definitely the, uh, the more distinctive of the two inlay options at the moment, and it gives you a pretty aggressive amount of grip, I would say. Not, you know, it's not gonna really come into play when you're kind of gorilla gripping the knife because your fingertips are really what's right there. If you're doing kind of twisting or heavy cuts, you feel it, but it's probably not gonna raise a blister. Gosh, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of traction right there. Definitely good for a working knife even though it is a fancy working knife right there. Two-tone finish on the blade. You've got the uh, stonewashed section on the grinds and satin flats. You've got ball bearings in the pivot. You've got the flipper. On top of that, you do have a thumb cutout, but it's pretty small. You have to kind of really think about getting in there and make sure you think about not putting any pressure on the lock bar if you want to do the more slow roll opening. This thing's flipper all the way. Some other cool little details that I like seeing. Check out the backspacer here with your lanyard point integrated there. We'll see if we can get an interior shot of that as well. Pretty cool looking. Milled pocket clip. It is screwed in from the inside, so you don't have a external screw here, and it allows them to get it almost deep carry for such a large knife, but it is right side only in this case. All right, next up, we've got a new Bear Ops trainer about 105 for this guy. Uh, and for that, you've got Cerakoted steel handles and a 440 steel blade. So it is actually a blade steel there, and I assume it would be hardened uh, at this point. Uh, but it's got a stonewashed finish on it and some holes cut out to make sure the balance is the same as the live blade version. Latch that's spring-loaded to keep it pointed straight out and a pocket clip as well, so you can carry your trainer day to day if you wish. And although I'm not an expert flipper, these feel pretty darn good. One of Bear Ops' best so far, I think, in terms of the ones I've personally felled. Personally held, slash felt, or felled. It's not like you feel it while you're holding it. A little bit. Feels pretty good though. And at 105, it's a little bit less expensive uh, than something like the Kershaw Lucha, if you're looking for another option for a trainer valley saw. Next up, we've got a custom Stroop Knives fixed blade. We're gonna end the video here with a couple of fixies. 260 bucks for this guy. This is the TU-1, the tactical use fixed blade with a five inch 1095 blade. Check out how distinctive that blade itself is. Definitely very functional for tactical use as well as just daily utility or heavier outdoor utility even. Really cool kind of tread finish on the flats. Yeah, man, they're very, very distinctive. Burlap handles here again. Mentioned I liked those earlier. This one's a little bit small for me personally in the hand. You can see my hands are slightly larger than average, but even so, I'm kind of butted up to both sides of that pretty strongly. Uh, so if your hands are you know, average or a little bit smaller, you shouldn't have much problem. But for a knife like this, purpose-driven, 
that forward and rearward retention is definitely appreciated. Lanyard hole here is a little bit small. You're not gonna be able to fit paracord through there, but on the reverse hold, it actually feels even better to me, especially with this place to rest your thumb here on the back. Nice and agile. Sheath comes with a tech lock on the back of very well fitting Kydex. Everything you need and not priced too expensively, honestly, for what you're getting here with a custom knife. If that's too rich for your blood though, check out this CRKT. This is a Russ Commer design. This is the catch-all. Not so much a tactical knife, more of a uh, big skinning knife slash camp knife, and it comes in just under 50 bucks right now. Five and a half inches is the blade length. You've got eight CR series stainless. Fit and finish on the blade is honestly quite excellent. The grinds uh, are super crisp. The plunge line and the top of the grind are very even. You've got a two-tone finish. You got the horizontal grain on the unground portion of the blade. Super nice. Handles are rubber, so you got a lot of traction there, and you've got all four fingers secured by finger grooves. And it works well for my hand size here, fills the hand nicely. I wouldn't really wanna chop with this knife, even though that shape is kind of the first inclination. Uh, with the hollow grind on this knife, it's not a, uh, well, it's not the strongest for choppy type tasks, but it is gonna slice fairly efficiently. But you do have a little bit of extra reach on the handle here at the back, thanks to those aggressive finger guards, it feels very safe to choke back on it. Works really nicely. Actually, I think this is gonna be pretty good at uh, food prep stuff, uh, working on a cutting board as well with that particular handle angle and shape. Yeah, I dig it as a camp knife. Like I said, I may wish this was like a flat grind uh, for certain uses, but the design itself is quite nice and the shape, or sorry, the, uh, the construction is very excellent. And the sheath completes the package quite nicely. It's not Kydex, but it is injection molded. It does click into the sheath, sheath very nicely. And you've got a retention strap for a little added peace of mind. Man, I dig it. I really do. All right, next up is the Gerber Downwind Drop Point. Uh, and for 39 bucks, this is pretty decent. Um, they don't tell you what steel it is, however. That's my only kind of uh, gripe with this particular knife, uh, which is to tell us it's just gonna be a simple stainless. But the rest of the design honestly holds up. Um, like I said, 39 bucks, four and a quarter inch blade, versatile drop point shape, or, uh, G10 handles with a bit of a, I hesitate to call it a wrapper, um, but it's you know a green injection molded material wrapping around the spine. Uh, this is not a full tang knife as near as I can tell. I did use a magnet to try and feel how far back the tang went. And it looks like it stops a little bit past this middle pin right here. So not a full tang strength, but it feels solid. The balance honestly is quite excellent. It sits right there on the index finger. So it's a nimble handler. At this inexpensive price, you could do a lot worse for you know, like a youngster's first knife or something that might live in a, uh, a junk box somewhere that you just need to have a, a knife and you don't wanna put a $100 knife just sitting in storage that might get used a handful of times. It's comfortable enough. The blade shape's gonna do it all. The sheath, it's waxed canvas. It's got a dangler, it's got a snap. Man, there's, a, there's honestly a lot here I really appreciate for the price. Gerber, tell us what the steel is though. Definitely would appreciate knowing that. Really cool, flat grind on that blade. Yeah, I'm, I'm begrudgingly impressed by that, I gotta say. Last but not least, we have a Benchmade fire starter, uh, which is really an Exotac uh, Fire Rod XL with the Benchmade logo on the front and the blue color. 45 bucks for this guy. It's the same as the, uh, the standard XL. In that, you've got a small section here at the top that is watertight, thanks to the O-ring here and they do supply that with a couple of Tinder Quick tabs. And you've got the ferro rod there on the other end, which if you do happen to use this up over time, which it's gonna take you quite a while, um, yeah, it doesn't say exactly how, uh, how many fires this one is rated for, but it's gonna be quite a few. But if you do, it's threaded as well. So you could go ahead and replace that. Or if you wanna just use this section as a tiny capsule to take around with you, that is also an option. So pretty cool. 
pretty cool accessory to some of your bench made stuff, especially if you want to coordinate your colors right there. All right, that's it. Kind of kept things moving a little bit this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of the knives down there in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of these guys, there will be links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there so that you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas over there. We're signing off. See you next time.